what's up everybody i'm gonna be talking about finding outliers today uh the inner quartile range the quartiles things like that so we have four parts to this question it says the accompanying data represent the miles per gallon of a random sample of cars with a three cylinder one liter engine a compute the z-score corresponding to the individual who obtained 39.5 miles per gallon interpret this result Okay, to find the z-score, we need to find the mean and the standard deviation. It's a relative score, and let's see, one thing to think about for our standard deviation is should we use the, is this a sample or, yup, it's a sample. So we should use stdev, the sample standard deviation, not the population standard deviation. Okay, so let's find the mean and standard deviation. So we click this, get the data, press this button, and it opens it in StackCrunch. So there's the data. So our goal right now, we're going to be doing this problem using StatCrunch and we, our goal is to find the mean and standard deviation. So how do you find the mean and sample standard deviation? You go to stat, summary stats, columns, click variable one, and then we'll just click mean and stdev. Stdev is the sample standard deviation, press compute, there it is. Now um, the z-score formula, I forgot, I, I got these for later, the lower fence and upper fence, but the z-score formula equals to, um, let's see, u divided by sigma, actually s, and this is actually x bar, x bar, so it's going to be the x value minus, let's just say, because so, x bar looks a little bit weird, let's just call it the mean x minus the mean divided by s which is the standard deviation this is the dev the sample standard deviation that's the formula for the z score right there so i'm just going to plug that in control c control v we have a value of 39.5 okay good 39.5 i'll put that in for x so 39.5 the mean is we found it in stack crunch where did we put it let's see where did i put it right here so for the mean i will copy that put that in for the mean for the standard deviation i will copy it it's right here that's the sample standard deviation and that'll give us our z score so our z score is right there We'll round that to the three. 0.1513 because there's a six there, right? You want to round up. 0.1513. Uh, the z-score corresponding to the individual is 0.1513. Type integers or decimals rounded to two decimal places. Okay, fine. So we'll get rid of the one three. And, indica and indicates that the data value is... 0.15 standard deviations above since it's positive so this is going to be above and the mean we're always above the mean the z-score is the number of standard deviations above or below the mean that's what a z-score is okay part b it says determine the quartiles so stack crunch will do that easily for us if we just edit go back into our output and just include we want q1 q2 and q3 now so I'll turn these off. I only need the median, that's Q2. And I want Q1 and Q3. Oh, I forgot to press control. Make sure you press control when you select. Ah. Okay, here we go. If you want to select multiple things, you have to press control or on a Mac command. Press compute and we got everything we need. Uh, let's do this to make it a little bit easier for us. Q1. 36.9 we're rounding to it says do not round 36.9 q2 38.5 q3 40.9 we're done with that one okay what else we have to compute and interpret the inner quartile range okay the good thing about stack crunch is that it finds the inner quartile range the iqr equals to q3 minus q1 right so we have q1 and q3 so technically we can find it 40.9 minus 36.9 so the iqr is 4 it's pretty easy so that's it um i did want to show you how to find it on stack crunch i wanted to mention that stack crunch does give the iqr if i edit this 
I could also get notice that stat crunch does give the IQR if I hold if I press control and then and then select IQR boom it's four see stat crunch will give you the IQR it'll calculate it this should be the middle 50% of the data the middle 50% of the observations in the data set that's what the IQR measures Okay, determine the lower and upper fences that's what i had in desmos over here uh the lower and upper fences so the lower fence up here is going to be q1 which is 36.9 minus 1.5 times 4 that's the lower fence and the upper fence would be that same thing with the well actually <laughs> it's not i always mess up sometimes i mess up and leave it as 36.9 but it's actually q3 so 40.9 and then plus this stuff is the same all this stuff is the same so here we go that's it so we got our lower and upper fences 30.9 control C come over here control V what was the upper 46.9 I'll copy paste that good um, are there any outliers okay an outlier how do we detect outliers? Anything smaller than 30.9 or bigger than 46.9. So it's kind of nice to do the following with the data. It's It may not be in order. I don't know. Maybe it is in order. It looks like it is in order. So that's nice. If it wasn't in order, I was going to show you how to sort it, but it actually is in order. So our smallest data value is 30.32.2 so that is bigger than the lower fence therefore there's no lower outliers what about 46.9 any values bigger than 46.9 uh, there's one value 49.2 so the outlier is 49.2 because very important on a test you want they might ask you why and you're gonna say something like 49.2 is an outlier since, oops, 49.2 uh, is an outlier since it is bigger than the upper fence. So that would be your sort of justification for your answer and that's it. So let's check the answer. Are there any el anything else? Nothing else. All right. Hope that helps.